final presentation before lunch uh, will be Bruce Malouche, who is Managing Director of VRX Silica, um, and that is the VRX Silica Sands Project. Please welcome Bruce. Chris. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, VRX Silica, but also I'll talk to you a little bit about the uh, silica market. Um, it's not well understood, and uh, what you find is with, uh, with silica sand, just a subtle difference in the type of sand you've got will determine which market it goes into, and there are literally hundreds of markets. Um, this is an interesting quote because um, the world produces or uses about 50 billion tonnes of silica sand a year. 49.5 billion goes into concrete. So this comment here that sand is the main material the modern cities are made of, it generally for, refers to, uh, to concrete, but also glass. And uh, it's, it's one of these products that you don't think about, but you're surrounded by it all the time. In your home, windows, paint, tube lighting, bench tops, LEDs, mirrors, fiber, their fiberglass bath, your TV, laptops, phones, monitors, LCDs, building cladding, plastics, ins insulation in the roof, uh, your containers in the fridge, all contain silica sand and all of different types of qualities. Unfortunately, none of them are made in Australia. But in your car, um, the glass, uh, you're surrounded by the glass and nobody looks out the windscreen and thinks, oh, 75% silica sand. So, and, and you know, maybe a sunroof, uh, electric cars, it uh, doesn't matter if it's uh, electric or uh, internal combustion, same amount of glass in it. The headlamps, LED lights, LCD displays, the paint on the outside. You notice the paint these days on uh, Mazdas? Uh, have a look at it closely. It's all super shiny. It's actually got more silica flour in it. And uh, it's, it's a fantastic product. It lasts almost forever. Tyres, silicon rubber tyres. The silica bit is, uh, is from silica sand. Casting moulds for heads, blocks and manifolds are all made out of silica sand. And when you ta start talking about renewables, solar panels, the top piece of glass is actually a very high tech glass, I'll talk about that a bit, but there's also a backing plate to it which sometimes is uh, uh, silica carbide, but it's, uh, it's often a piece of uh, cheaper glass. Thermal insulation in, uh, in lithium, Industrial batteries, they, in between the battery packs, they have a, th a silica sponge. And it's the insulation because lithium batteries, unfortunately, do regularly catch fire. And all it does is slow the fire up. But there's thermal protection in uh, big industrial batteries. High tensile fiberglass yarn. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a special yarn. There's only about three companies in the whole world that make this particular yarn. And you can make a fiberglass that is damn near bulletproof, but in fact, it's the covering on wind turbine blades. When the blades are whipping around, the tip of it's doing about 100 mile an hour. When it whacks a little dicky bird, you don't need the bird poking a hole in your, uh, your wind turbine blade. And so it's, it's a growing market, and there are so few companies around that produce this high tensile yarn. But 50 billion tonnes a year, you know, iron ore pales in comparison. So it's a staggering amount of sand that is used every year. So much so, in our case, Asia is running out of sand. Now, when you think sand, forget deserts. That little orangey red colour you get in, the, uh, in desert sands, that's iron. Iron is the enemy when it comes to making concrete because you need an inert sand and certainly the enemy when it comes to making glass. Beach sands, forget them as well. They're predominantly calcium carbonate. carbonate. It's shell grit. So that's not suitable as well. You take deserts out, you take beaches out, what are you left with? Not a lot of sand. So you need granite-based sands. Now, it's a finite resource for one, but it's also getting increasingly difficult to access. The bulk of the high quality silica sand in Asia is dredged from freshwater rivers and lakes. Obviously not sustainable, and they are slowly not only depleting their known resources, but they're losing access to other resources. Australia's got plenty of sand, and we certainly have a lot. So it's not just Asia that's running out of sand. All of uh, the whole world's running out of sand. 
Uh, good quality sand. So uh, we've got a fair bit. We're really aiming for the plate glass and container glass uh, industry in uh, Asia. Um, at the moment, we're uh, predominantly dealing with companies in Korea, Japan, Malaysia, Philippines, Taiwan, and uh, a little bit in Indonesia. Notice I didn't mention China. So, but China is the largest manufacturer of glass in the world. 46% of the world's glass comes from China. We've got five glass factories in Australia, 270 in, uh, in China. So, but we're, uh, we don't need to go to China. Uh, Korea and Japan will eat up everything we've got. So we're a WA company. All of our prospects are in Western Australia. We've easily got the most advanced non-private or uh, listed company silica sand projects in Australia. We've got five very large projects. They total more than 1.4 billion tonnes. We don't need to find any more sand. What we need to do is start exporting them. Three of them are in the Midwest around uh, Arrowsmith, sits between Eniaba and Dongra. We have one at Mushay, just north of Perth, very high quality and a very large deposit. We barely uh, scratch the surface of that one. And we have another one east of uh, Esperance. Each of these projects are subtly different sand and they'll each go into different markets so they're not competing with each other. Very, it's simple mining, simple processing, um, no, no toxic chemicals involved in it. It's washing, screening, and, um, and uh, it, it, it really uh, digging it up and uh, exporting it is the key. We've got railway lines. Uh, these, these sites were selected for three criteria. Number one, it had to be granite sands. So all these sands have eroded from the Darling Scarp. So from the Darling Scarp, the geomorphology is the same from Bunbury to Geraldton. You have the Darling Scarp at the base of the Scarp, which is a very turbulent zone. You tend to have mineral sands. Then you have lake systems that are dune system. Right underneath this hotel is the dune system. Then you get lakes again, Lake Munga, that type of thing. And then you've got coastal dunes and uh, limestone. That geomorphology is the same. So it's this dune system you want to be on. This is the dune system we are on but all of our land is on unallocated crown land, previously known as vacant crown land. So we only have two stakeholders, the state, which is the EPA, and native title holders. So we've got agreements in place with all native title holders and now we're dealing with the state. Um, these are very big projects, they'll last for 100 years. And therein lies a bit of the problem because uh, when we're seeking EPA approval, we're, we're looking for very long life projects. Uh, nothing like this has been done before in, uh, in Western Australia, particularly in the Swan Plain of this scale. There are some other sand projects, but not, uh, not of this sort of scale. Leading our uh, uh, projects is Arrowsmith North, which um, sits up between uh, Donga and uh, Eniaba. Um, this is a bit difficult to see, but they've all got over, the, the first uh, two projects have got uh, 200 million tonnes each in reserve. So if you talk resources, there's sort of hundreds of millions of tonnes. And we've been very selective about what we're looking to mine from the, pro, from the uh, point of view of getting the highest quality sand, but the lowest environmental impact. So Arrowsmith North, this is our, uh, our leading project. Um, we've grey controlled six years of production. It's got reserves of 200 million tonnes, good for 100 years. Can produce 99.7% um, silica dioxide, suitable for flat glass, automobile glass, container glass. Uh, we've completed the drilling reserve estimates, process circuit design, Oh, metallurgy, process circuit design and engineering all the way up to uh, fabrication drawings. This project's ready to go subject to EPA approval. Uh, it has an unused railway line from Eniaba to Geraldton with access to uh, Geraldton Port. Uh, we've already drilled the water bore. Um, we're accessing the Ara um, which is down about 350 metres. Uh, it is next door to Brand Highway. Um, and we're looking, uh, the power supply at the moment, we're looking at maybe putting a power station at the Bahara Springs gas well. Uh, so we'll get gas directly from the wellhead after it's dewatered before it's compressed. So no transport cost on, uh, on gas. 
It's the cheapest gas, uh, cheapest power solution you could possibly get in Western Australia. Uh, the bush here is, um, uh, it's called Quangan Heath. It's about waist high. It's predominantly banks here. Um, but most important, this is, uh, that's actually the top of a dune that is four kilometres wide and 12 kilometres long and eight metres deep. Um, it looks nice and flat, but in fact it is the top of a dune. So we're not digging a pit, we're knocking the top off a sand dune. And we've developed a unique um, rehabilitation process because these plants only have a root system that goes down two, three hundred mil. So we come along and take a 400 mil deep sod and remove material, uh, remove the topsoil and the plants growing in it and put it directly back behind us, direct transfer um, to uh, behind us. And it's done with a um, modified bucket on a, on a front end loader. It's a very simple system, but it easily has the best uh, rehabilitation outcomes uh, that you can get if you're gonna be mining in this type of uh, countryside. So uh, the, the biggest hurdle here by far is environmental approvals. Uh, we just recently finished a, um, uh, a public review period for our environmental review document, which is the last document uh, we lodge. That uh, review period closed in uh, July. Just last week we, res we received comments on those submissions back from the EPA. We will um, uh, respond to those uh, submissions and over the next month or so, we should go close to uh, getting environmental approval for this project towards the end of this year, probably with Christmas in there, probably early next year. So once we get approval, we're ready to hit the ground running. Uh, Aerosmith Central is nearby. That's actually at the second stage of the approvals. We, we actually lodged the document June last year. We're still waiting on a response to that. Uh, the EPA have said they can only look at one project at a time. Uh, Aerosmith brand is a relatively new pro project. These are all within the same area. It's about 270 k's north of Perth. Um, it has all the same infrastructure around it. Um, and it's very, very large, but this is really a strategic holding for us at the moment. We have no immediate plans. Uh, it's a good holding. Muche is a whole new ball game. It sits only 50 k's north of Perth. Um, it'll, uh, it's very high grade. And this grade of this sand is suitable to make ultra pure or high purity glass. And that's a piece of glass that goes over solar panels. And that's a market that is growing at 30% per year. This, this product is in high demand. However, a lot of the attributes of Arrowsmith North will apply to this. So every study that we've done at Arrowsmith North, we've repeated here at Muche. And it's similar, but it's got taller trees in there, but it's the recalcitrant species of low grasses and sedges that are suitable for VDT. Simple processing, the key to it is actually attritioning, where you've got an agitated slurry where you are getting uh, sand grains, rubbing on sand grains, so it polishes the grains and uh, you get a higher... Uh, higher quality product. Um, processing, it's a small footprint. Um, we take our ESG responsibilities uh, very seriously, but we also think that the ideal time to deal with these types of issues are at the planning stage. So we're spending a lot of time on this now and uh, have been for a while. And we've got um, uh, some very good outcomes there. Um, Australia, Australia is the largest exporter of silica sand in the world, but they're all privately owned. Cape Flattery in northern Queensland is owned by Mitsubishi. It's been operating for 50 years. Um, it does about two, two and a half, up to three million tonnes a year. It's unknown. <laughs> uh, people are not aware. They generally are exporting to companies affiliated with Mitsubishi, but they're unaware it's there. The other companies in, uh, in Western Australia, once again, they're all privately owned. So people are unaware that uh, it's happening. Asia has banned exports of silica sand because they're worried about their own domestic supply. So Australia's in, uh, in a good position. We've got a number of other initiatives, particularly uh, we got uh, published in the Critical Minerals Prospectus last year. We have a grant to, from the state government as well to produce silica flour. Uh, we've recently been granted a geothermal energy project that has the potential to produce hydrogen and you can produce glass using hydrogen. Um, the board, uh, you can have a look at that, but all very experienced board. 
Um, corporately, we got about 500 odd, uh, 570 million shares out there. We're in the middle of a share purchase plan. We just completed a placement, got about 4 million bucks in the bank. Um, really, this is right, being in the right time, right place, right commodity. So we've got very long life um, sand supplies. Uh, we've got WA domestic gas reserves. Uh, so there's potential here for glass making here in Western Australia. These are very, very long-term projects and it's got you know, potential to start feeding into uh, uh, the, uh, the high-tech ultra-clear glass uh, uh, and uh, solar panel market. Thank you very much. Got time for questions? Yeah, we have got Should? time for questions, yeah. Uh, is there a microphone? Just so everyone else can hear oh, the question. Yell out. Oh, so everyone else can hear them. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Um, seems very exciting. Is uh, the Aerosmith North being first cab off the rank, uh, potentially, um, is the intention to either rail or road the bulk uh, product to Geraldton for export? Ultimately, rail. Right. Um, we're working on a solution at the moment. The issue is not loading the train or using the train. It's unloading it at uh, Geraldton Port. But we're working on a solution for that now. It'll probably take two years, so expect to be trucking out of there for probably two years and then train. Okay. And uh, i refresh my mind now. What volume is planned per year for export? Um, first couple of years, about a million tonne a year, but we'll ramp that up to two million tonnes a year. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Cheers. Thank All you. right. Thanks, Bruce.